Hi, this is Dr. Mark Santa, and welcome to this Facebook Live. I'm here with uh, Dr. Morgan Mulliken. We're really excited to be here today with you. We're going to share some great information about how you can actually leverage your staff, leverage your practice team to help uh, pump up your practice profitability. So we're very, very excited to be here with you. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and um, be able to have you all get to see our slide presentation. Here we go, slideshow. And from the beginning, start. Fantastic. All right. So again, I'm Dr. Mark Santa, and uh, I'm CEO with Break the Coaching. I'm here with Dr. Morgan Mulliken. Morgan, great to be with you today. Uh, I think this is coming up close to 20 years of coaching chiropractic practices uh, together, Morgan, and it's uh, amazing to see the changes that have come and, and uh, how wonderful uh, it's been uh, an experience to help chiropractic practices grow literally from startup uh, to now we've had the ability to see uh, practices uh, where docs have actually exited their practices and um, helping them and assisting them uh, along the way. So it's a, it's a really, a, it's been a, a beautiful time uh, to work with chiropractors. And especially now in the current environment, people are facing some challenges. It's really, really neat to be able to help them rebound their practices and utilizing the uh, the uh, systems that Breakthrough Coaching has uh, put in place Mark, throughout gotta, the years. I, I, I got to tell a quick story. Um, I've got a client I'm coaching right now that I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say six, seven, eight years ago, he was a rehab CA for one of my clients. And through the course of working with this office, he got in he just fell in love with chiropractic, went off to chiropractic school, and now I'm coaching him in his brand new office. Um, it's kind of like watching your kids grow, and now you get to, you know, your or your patients that, you know, were just patients, and now they're, you know, went off to college, and now they're a chiropractor. So it's almost like a evolution there. It's amazing. It really is great, and it does give you a great, uh, great perspective as well. So uh, I have a motto of why should anybody work for me? <laughs> right? And the reason that you can have the uh, opportunity to work for me is because you're going to work with me. And I know that uh, not one of us is as smart or capable as all of us together. And so when I see docs who kind of slow on, on hiring, um, I know <clears throat> Morgan has a motto, hire fat, which means have a little extra staff rather than be understaffed, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the primary for, re for hiring staff is because you can't do it all by yourself. And it increases your ability to be able to do those things that are the highest value things that you can do. And guess what that is? That's caring for patients. That may be marketing and building your brand, um, but it might not be some of the ad administrative or operating uh, procedures that take to run the business of the practice. So I say you, the reason you want to ha hire somebody is to make your life easier. And if you're a staff member, probably want to remember that as well, is that we're here on a team. And as a team, the goal is to make each other's life easier. And, you know, now more than ever, it's watching each other's back. It's picking up the ball if it gets fumbled. It's helping do whatever it takes to get the job done and to make sure in these crazy times that the patient is still having an amazing experience, right? You have all these conversations about um, uh, health and sanitation and so easy to get off focus <clears throat> about why we're here and to take your eye off the ball, which is, uh, which is the patient, so. It's so true, Mark. Um... I was just reflecting there for a minute as you were talking about our time and my time in coaching. It's, it's, I see so often chiropractors are entrepreneurial and that's good. And sometimes that gets in the way and 
they start hiring and they get really talented people around them. And I used to have some talented people around me. And before you know it, you start micromanaging or you start doing things without proper delegation. And I think one of the, the first things I do uh, when a client comes on is I look at all the job duties. I look at the skills, I look at their talent, I look at who's doing what, <clears throat> because if, if delegation isn't lined out properly, it can be a huge time waster. And more importantly, you, you don't leverage some of the talent that's sitting right there in your office. And time is money. Uh, so just knowing how valuable um, our time is, and we've got to sit there and measure the things that are going on throughout the week. And one of the things that we see is, particularly healthcare providers generating revenue, the more we can surround ourselves with people that are going to support us, focus on what's best, and that is treating patients. And then everybody else around us handles all those um, support tasks that are just so critical. You know, sometimes I sit back and I'm talking to a client and I, and I, I forget, um, and I kind, of, I kind of relish for a moment, boy, I would love to be a front desk coordinator. I just think how valuable that position is and how fun it is and the inter interaction. And then, then I start talking about being, being the billing coordinator and, you know, I love playing defense and, and, you know, going after, you know, making sure every dollar counts. And then, then I start relishing about how valuable the, the therapy staff is and really seeing patients go from one point to, you know, to a starting point to an end point and encouraging them and nurturing them to follow through with all those tasks. So you could see how it'd be, it'd be really easy just to take my eyes off my task and that's treating patients chiropractically. Absolutely, so <clears throat> that delegation um, with accountability, like you said, we're measuring and what gets measured gets managed and we're focusing on our, without a doubt, our highest uh, tasks. And then just making sure you measure now. Now take some time in your practice billing hours. Time is money. But also, we can't just keep practicing all the time. We've got to sit there and focus on how we're going to practice the most effective, effectively. So once you surround yourself with a very valuable team, then take some quality time and really analyze what's working and what's not. And really come up with a plan on how, so that when you truly are playing the game, you're playing it very effective. And you're, and you're spending every out of energy to make sure that patient has the unbelievable experience. Um, and, and I think that's, that's the ultimate goal. You know, not only do they get healthy, that patient, but uh, remember they're spending two very important commodities. They're, that patient's spending time and they're spending money. And in today's world, people are very, very picky about where that's spent and they're gonna be analyzing it. We don't wanna screw that up. Absolutely. And then looking at dollars, um, you know how much it's, you were talking about um, profitability at the very beginning. It's, it's amazing how many times clients don't really analyze what's working. Right. You know, they, they have equipment, they have procedures, um, but they never really measure statistics. And that, and Dr. Barry, I think that probably surprises you the most as it surprises me. When a new client comes on, we'll ask them about stats. And many times they have no earthly idea. They have, they, and it's, it's- They don't even know where in the software to go to get it, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, um, they don't know how to pull it out of their EMR or they don't, I mean, they just, they just, they're, they're heads down and they're just treating, treating, treating and they have no idea what's working and what's not. And that's so critical in today's world uh, especially with managed care. And if you've got a blended practice, you've got a little PI, you've got a little Medicare, you've got a little work comp, you've got a little general health, and you've got a little cash, you've got to know where your profit centers are. And the only way you're going to do that is you're going to measure statistically and then study it as a team. And, you know, Morgan, one of the things that is a great lesson that I learned is that if, and listen, you can make a uh, an, an honest day's living as a chiropractor. And you can do that without going into the gray zones, without let's make a deal, without doing funny money stuff. But in order to have the type of uh, 
income, personal income, that is going to allow you to have what one of my personal core values is, is my freedom. And that includes my financial freedom, uh, my freedom to be able to use my time and spend my time uh, in the ways that's going to be most fulfilling to me as an individual. I cannot do that, Morgan, with just my two hands. I, I know that I have to leverage off to those other team members to build that team in such a way that we can generate a revenue, not only for myself, but also for my other team members that are going to allow them to be living their highest life, to allow them to do the things that they would like to do and vacation where they'd like to vacation and send their kids where they'd like to uh, send their kids for school and, and uh, to, to, to literally have the, the life that you deserve, that you spent all that time in years going to chiropractic school for, maybe came out of school now, what is it, Morgan, like $250,000 in debt, and thinking, okay, I can, I'm just going to do this all myself. There gets to be a point where in order to leverage your earning power, we only have so many years, um, going ahead and hiring that great staff around you. And I don't have to tell you more because I know you had three practices up and running uh, at one time there in Dallas, Texas. And uh, so leveraging uh, those uh, resources, uh, I say don't be penny, pound, uh, penny wise and pound foolish. Don't count your pennies when you could spend a dollar and have a, a, a much greater return. Um, you know, Jim Collins wrote a great book and um, good, great. So if you haven't read that one, put it on your summer reading list. And uh, he talks about the concept of the bus, like your business is a bus and you got to get the right people on the bus, first of all. So hiring the right people is really, really important. Breakthrough Coaching, we have resources and resources on hiring how to hire. We have job descriptions. We have job postings for every position in the practice. We have onboarding uh, procedures that are super, super solid. So getting the right people, that's one of the big things that we do. I know, Morgan, <clears throat> I was just talking to, to one of our uh, clients who's about to uh, hire an associate. And um, you know who that is. She's down in Jacksonville, Florida, and um, she was about to, uh, um, uh, well, she had the doc come in and follow her. We call it shadow her for the whole day and uh, stayed with her the whole day. This doc has two separate practices. And uh, I said, well, well, what do you think? You think you're going to hire her and uh, the associate? And she said, well, I've got to talk to Morgan first. <laughs> and so, um, you want to expect that uh, expect that call to be uh, coming in <laughs> soon. So getting the right people, getting them on the bus, getting the wrong people off the bus. I think Morgan, you would agree also, and <clears throat> you can share with our listeners right now. Uh, not only is Morgan a black belt hirer, uh, Morgan is a black belt. Firer, and I know you know the story I'm thinking of. We were somewhere on the road in a seminar and we're having lunch. We were, we were at the Davenport homecoming. Yeah, and Morgan excuses himself from the, I just need five minutes. I'll be right back, excuse me. So I figured he's going to the men's room, right? Comes back five minutes later. I said, everything okay? So yeah, I just had to fire uh, an associate. <laughs> I said, you what? It's no problem. The new guy's coming in on Monday. I had to make sure this guy was out in time. So getting the, the wrong people off the bus, but doing it quickly, right? Fire quickly, hire uh, uh, slowly, right? Take your time. Make sure you're hiring for core values. And then once you've got them in, how many times has this happened to you, Morgan, where you have hired somebody for position A, let's call it front desk, and you find out that their real skill set 
is in position B, maybe an insurance collections or a patient financial counselor <clears throat> and laterally moving a team member so that their skill set actually fits the role, um, that's a really big thing. So um, profitability is all about people. It's about the right people. And as you said, uh, Morgan, it's about investing time in those people, right? And, and not expecting that they're going to learn the position by osmosis or even worse, that they're going to be taught the position by the person who's exiting that position before them, right? Who's already got a, a foot out the door, but having a, uh, a real training program and system, I think that's one of the things in Breakthrough we're most proud about is that uh, our beautiful online resources for training staff. So they, they hit we, the, as you know, as you know, we just revamped and kind of tweaked that a little bit because we've got a, a training guide. You think about it, we've got a training guide for every key position in the office and it's all automated. And so including the doctor. I just, yeah, I just hired a, a new team member for one of my clients um, yesterday and she starts um, Monday, the 29th. And um, so she's already logged on and starting the training modules even before her first day so that she has a really good understanding of so many basic features in, in the position she's going to hold in that office. It's, it's really a great tool we have for our clients. Absolutely. I love it. Um, so I like to say um, you, you can't fix the unfixable. And quite frankly, as chiropractors, as doctors, we, it's in our hearts to fix, right? We are naturally fixers and we want to fix everybody. And that's why we're really slow to fire. And um, I, I like to say, you, you know, you, you can't coach height, <laughs> you know, I'm as tall as I am. You get, no matter how much you want to coach me, I'm not growing any taller. Well, same thing, you can't coach core values. And the core values of a positive attitude, positive personality, you would agree with me, Morgan, we say this all the time, work ethic, right? That's, that's the difference between success and not success, is you're willing to just, and it doesn't take that much more, willing to outwork um, that other person, that other team member, just that much more. And so um, our onboarding process in Breakthrough Coaching we interview for core values first and skill set second. So you can have a rock star skill set, but have a, a covert um, subversion of our core values. Negative attitude is one of them, right? And that leeches into the practice. You know how they always say one bad air, apple can spoil the whole barrel? Well, it's the same thing in a practice. You get one person with that bad attitude who starts complaining and starts the gossiping and starts all the stuff that somebody with a bad attitude has, it can go right through that whole team. Um, and pretty soon you're ending up with a whole mess that you have to deal with. So um, don't try to fix the unfixable, have systems in place where you're not only measuring their skill set, but you're regularly conversing with them about the core values and the mission, the vision of the practice. And when you see there's a lack of alignment there, right away, set the wheels in motion to get the right people on the bus. And guess what? When you pull that rotten apple out, the rest of the practice team like breathes a sigh of relief, like, thank goodness they're gone. I thought they'd never get rid of him, right? So um, that's, a, that's a real, real big one. Um, positivity attracts. Uh, it absolutely is a magnetic emotion. People like to be around positive people. I'm sure you have patients on your list. Those uh, energy vampires who come in, and um, rather than uh, looking forward, you go, oh no, 
Mary's on the schedule today. <laughs> do, I, do I have to go in there and see her? So it's the same with your team. If they're carrying a bad attitude, if patient comes up and their most important thing is whatever's on the computer screen in front of them or who's ever on the phone and not taking a moment just to do the nod and the wink and hi, I acknowledge that you, you exist and you've just come into my space uh, versus, you know, what happens, I'm sure we've, we've all had the uh, experience of walking up to a, a hostess in a, uh, in a restaurant and maybe not being acknowledged or maybe in a, in a doctor's office and the glass is closed and you're like, well, you know, hello, I'm a human being here. So knowing that those touches, person to person touches, exuding positivity and also don't forget, over the telephone, people can hear your smile. They can hear if you're overworked. They can hear if you're stressed out. So hitting that pause button or reset button before you pick up the phone and there's a patient there is really a key thing. So um, in terms of having the staff be part of the profit generating uh, component of the practice, man, your, that staff is your first line the first point of contact that most patients are going to have outside of Google, they'll Google you, but the first live contact they're going to have is whoever picks up that phone or whoever greets them at the front desk. And Morgan, I'm sure you've had the experience. Front desk can turn the thing on and they can turn it right down <laughs> as well, just as much as they, uh, as much as they want. So <clears throat> making sure that we practice, our, our dialogues for new patient calls, that we know what we're going to say, that we know how to greet patients and make them feel that they're the most important reason for us being here, right? Those are key things that I know we work with our, our clients a whole bunch with. You know, we could spend an hour on this topic because... <coughs> We, we track stats on all clients and we can see when things are just up, 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 you know, we know that they've got a good team. And, and part of the healing process, and Dr. Mark, you know this, I mean, it was, it, it, they we're not taught this in school, but I really believe, and I know you believe, part of the healing process is when that patient literally walks in the front door and is greeted and taken care of and acknowledged and recognized by their name and not just, hey, go ahead and sign in. And there's just, there's, there's a whole aspect of just joy exuding from this team. And, and you and I have been many times on trips where we've gone into a, a, a business and we could sense there's a little bit of friction or there is just not the atmosphere of, of love and compassion in this team. And it immediately makes us, the consumer, feel awkward and immediately like, hey, what's going on? So having that team not only gel, but having it make it an environment where the patient just goes, oh my gosh, I got to tell everyone about this place. This is so nice. Or it's, and that's another thing too, you said about, there's a very good chance this patient is spending some time where it's not pleasant, where it's not positive, where it's not good recognition from their employers or their, 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 their boss. We might be their only cup of cold water they experience all day in that office. And, and so the more we can do that, the more they're gonna just um, remember that event and remember that uh, place of exchange and look forward to it the next time they wanna go back. Uh right now where a lot of communities are still experiencing lockdown and, and shut in and that patient comes out to the chiropractic practice, this may be their only engagement outside of their home for the week. And knowing that, and, and I've heard Morgan time and time again, docs have shared with me how grateful that their patients are, that they're there and they're serving them and they're with them and how much they felt the difference of if they missed a couple of three weeks of chiropractic care, how they can perceive the difference. They don't feel as good. They don't feel as energy. I'm not talking about back pain here at all. 
I'm talking about they don't feel as good in their home. They're confined. They're watching horrible messages on the television screen and reading it in the newspaper and their poor uh, autonomic nervous system is zapped out. Their poor little adrenal glands are just squeezed dry. And to come into that place of respite and calm, right? What a beautiful, beautiful uh, experience that is um, to share. So I like to say, foster a practice culture that promotes profitability. And, you know, sometimes uh, docs get a little squirrely, staff gets a little squirrely when we talk about profitability. And I want to tell you, it's absolutely okay to have financial freedom. It's absolutely okay to have uh, financial goals. It's absolutely okay to have money as one of the reasons for that business existing, for the practice existing. Now, it's not the primary reason, but it's okay. You don't have to, if, if you've come up in a, in a childhood where maybe money was scarce, there's a good chance that you might have a bit of a scarcity attitude about money yourself, that maybe you feel that you're not as deserving as somebody else, or that you know that having a financial lifestyle that uh, allows you to, as I mentioned, take your vacation or or have the car that you would like to have, and or the uh, the uh, uh, have your children attend the colleges that uh, that they like to attend, and and Morgan, I'm not. I'm preaching to the choir here with five kids. You you know this absolutely that having an attitude, a healthy attitude about money is a really important conversation for you to have with yourself. That money is a good thing. In fact, money is only one thing and that is energy. Money is stored energy. And when you have money in the bank, you have stored energy to be able to expend doing those things that you'd like to do with your life and with the people you love. So I'm absolutely, and I know you are too, Morgan, I'm absolutely fine having people feel comfortable about money and having them have an abundance attitude about money, that money, money flowing this way to me is a great thing as long as I know that I'm circulating it back and I'm bringing that energy out into the community and making a difference with it. So create a, a practice culture that encourages acknowledgement, catching each other doing things right. So that is no joke, foundation of having a high performing team is a culture of acknowledgement that I'm not looking for you to do something wrong. I'm not the procedure police, right? I know that typically if there's a procedure that breaks down, it's normally the system or somebody didn't get proper training or we didn't have time to get them into the proper headspace yet for that job. And it usually falls on the business owner or the office manager or whoever the trainer is uh, for that position. It's it's not often that it's the person. So um, having a culture of acknowledgement is truly, truly a big, 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 big deal. I like to say, catch people right. And when you do, celebrate it, man. Don't keep it in your back pocket. Praise in public. You do something great. The best thing you can do is acknowledge somebody in front of their peers, in front of the team. You know, give them a, hit them with a 20. Here's lunch on me. Or, or here's a Starbucks card or an Amazon card. Do, you know, do something nice for yourself. We really appreciate it. And then when things go south, when things go sideways, as they normally do, not just in chiropractic practice, but any business, sometimes people drop the ball. Do that in private. Do not reprimand in public. You can break the bond of trust and respect that is the glue to your team. If I embarrass somebody, if I call somebody out in front of the team, worse in front of a patient, rather than 
taking this and making it a learning growing mo moment, I can break relationship with that patient, uh, with that uh, team member in a way that quite frankly, I may never uh, be able to repair. So making sure that I'm giving the props, the high fives when it goes right, and when it goes wrong, then we do that privately, one-on-one, -on -one, never in public. And, and the best time that we, we have a procedure, as you know, in our break the coaching system of having a weekly team meeting. And within that weekly team meeting, we have an opportunity for successes and challenges. And you can only imagine a week goes by, you hear so many good things, so many amazing miracles in, in a chiropractic setting. And if we don't, if pretty soon it becomes so common, Mark, that you and I, and maybe even some staff thinks, oh, that's okay, no big deal. It is a big deal. And to remind and surround ourselves with some of those successes on how awesome what we're doing is influencing others in the community. What a beautiful way to share that in your team meeting. And, and even through tracking that, we've got a great thing called the weekly communication sheet where literally you can communicate together on all the things that go through the week that maybe some things that need a little polish, maybe some things that need a little focus, or a little tension, but also things that were extremely well. You can only imagine, it's almost like, and I, you know, I never played football, but I, I treated enough football players to know that after they play a game, the next day or a couple of days later, they go back and they watch film and they watch it and watch it and watch it. And what they're looking for is not only what didn't work, but they also look to see, hey, what worked really well? Because if we can duplicate what really worked well, again, we'll get the same outcome. So that's another thing too, seeing some of those successes fuels us to continue to do what we do so, so much and love. And then why do we do it? Um, you know, it's so funny, there's been some really great books written on why the consumer today um, is really a, a much more educated consumer than when you and I got into practice. I mean, it's kind of sad to think, Mark, that uh, the internet didn't exist when we got into practice. And so there was no Google, there was no looking up stuff. And, and, and now people come in and they, if we can tell them why they need this, not, hey, here's what you've got, but here's why you need to do this. It's amazing to me when a new iPhone comes out, Apple will sell millions and millions and millions of a new phone. And they're not ashamed to say that like 98% of the people that bought that phone on that first day had a perfectly good phone. That's right. right. They bought that phone because Apple does an amazing job of saying why you need that <clears throat> new phone. And I think that's what we really need to remember that the consumer coming in really needs to be constantly being educated on why this is important to get a chiropractic adjustment, to get the chiropractic therapy, to get the chiropractic nutrition or whatever the procedure is and not just performing. Now we've got some great tools in our, in our toolbox too. You think about um, a, a laser, a class four laser, you've got spinal decompression, you've got acupuncture, You've got some things that the average person may not have any idea what it is or how it works. And the more we can explain the why and teaching our staff so that they can explain the why is critical. And then you can't sell what you don't own. And this kind of goes in, in tune with what we just said about not only do I have to share the why, but the more I can share with my whole team what it is that we do and why we do it, the more they're going to own it. And the more that they're going to be comfortable in sharing it. And uh, I know we both teach this to clients all the time. When we have a new hire, it's really good for that new hire to make an appointment. I, I'll never forget my first coach. I, I, I kind of was taken back, but my first coach told me, Morgan, when you hire someone, have them physically make an appointment on your, on your, on your appointment calendar and have them go out to the reception room, sit down, Fill out the paperwork. This was before, you know, electronic. Fill out the paperwork on the clipboard. Come back, have a consultation, have a history, have an exam. And how valuable that turned out to be because now they experienced what every patient has to experience ultimately. And they can relate to it. 
and now they can they can show the why or the value in that because of something they, they learn in experiencing that. So really, you, you can't possibly have a team member explain the value of what it is that we do unless they truly own and understand why we do it. Yeah, and Morgan, I'd have to say that <clears throat> where there's a team member who is not under care, and I'm not talking about acute care, but for wellness type care, under regular wellness care, and in uh, my practice, that meant you had to have a, an appointment on the schedule. It wasn't catch as catch can, end of the day, I'm going out to the parking lot and, and going home and, hey doc, can you give me an adjustment? And, and I'm like you, I'll never say no. To, to me, somebody asking me to give them a chiropractic adjustment is the greatest honor you can give me. It's just, don't do it at seven o'clock at night after I just saw 60 people and I want to go home, right? And uh, so we really require that those uh, team members have a regularly scheduled appointment. And I'm act actually fine having it done where they patients are in the office and they just says, I'll be back in just five minutes. It's my time for my adjustment and going back there and getting adjusted. And um, that way, patients are seeing how we really, really uh, understand this and we get it. And um, I, I like to say that um, great patient care, as you mentioned before, includes that entire practice team <clears throat> from the front desk first call all the way back to the doctor, to, to therapy. Um, if you're going to have a profitable practice, people have to know the why, as you mentioned it, and your patients are never gonna know the why unless your staff knows the why. And they need to know the healing process. They need to know the science behind chiropractic. Great and super, we're gonna do a functional capacities test on a patient when they're out of pain. What are we looking for? Why are we looking for it? Great, the patient's out of pain. That means the inflammation is gone. Now the healing can begin. What does that mean? What are the procedures that we do? You mentioned decompression, laser. What are these modalities for? How do they impact the body? What, what do they do? And sharing the science behind what it is that you do is really, really important so that not only are you able to give great recommendations to your patients, look them in the eyes and give them a recommendation based upon what physiology demands, what their body requires and not what their insurance pays for, right? Is absolutely essential. You can't do that without a full understanding of the science of healing. And we, we spent a lot of time teaching this exact concept to our docs and to our team members. So this provides your team, your whole team with a sense of purpose. And they know, as you mentioned, Morgan, they're part of the healing process. It, it, it's not just a cog in the wheel. I'm not just front desk. I'm not just uh, finance. I'm not just therapy, that I'm part of the healing process. So up on the screen, you see a great um, uh, uh, graphic, and it's the graphic of the, of the healing process in the body. It's the laws of physiology in a graphic. You can find it on Wikipedia. Just go to uh, Google, put in Wikipedia uh, healing calendar or Wikipedia wound healing. And these are unskippable steps to the healing process. So everything from the inflammation calming down, pain going away, scar tissue formation. That's not such a great time at week 14 when the patient's out of pain, but they still have scar tissue. Moving into tissue remodeling that we do through manual stretching therapy techniques and into rehab where we do strengthening of muscles in, and endurance and balancing of muscles in terms of flexor extensor ratio. And then finally locking it all in with proprioceptive training 
And knowing that we can't skip any one of these steps, if we're going to have complete healing and to be able to have that patient move to wellness care, it's absolutely essential that not only can you say that as easy as I can say that, but any member of your practice team can as well. <clears throat> so have the team be an extension of you all the way back to our original slide. You can't do it alone. You can't do it by yourself. So when I've got the team out there and they're engaging patients and they're talking about their improvements, what's getting better? How are you doing? That's wonderful, sharing that and shouting it out and being able to, because they own it, because they've experienced, answer questions when patients are unsure. Um, letting patients know, hey, if the pain is gone, that's great. That means now we can really start the healing. That's a big deal. And, and talking about the perspective of, of just perceived value or that, that um, you know, there, I, to, to take uh, a patient and just treat them like a number or not to acknowledge them. I, I was sharing this with a staff or with a staff member at a client yesterday. And when we go to a place of business, one of three things is going to happen. Um, it's going to meet our expectation. It's going to exceed our expectation, or it's going to drop below our expectation. And the more that we can work on exceeding the expectation of a patient and, and not just having, you know, this, this illustration reminds me of that glass window. Again, you were talking about earlier of monsters incorporated where, you know, Mike would go up and the glass window would slide across, you know, um, but how it's, it just take away the glass window. Think about how many times a patient comes into an office that is never acknowledged, especially acknowledged by name. And, um, or in the winter months, uh, if you're in a cold climate, you know, could I get you something warm to drink? In the summertime, you know, maybe having little bottles of water, cold bottles of water that they could have. But just doing something that makes it um, just not ordinary. I mean, we've all been into a business. When we got out to our car, we, want, we went, wow. That was really, and then fill in the blank, good, great, whatever. It could have been a movie, could have been a restaurant, could have been the dry cleaners, it could have been a bank, could have been the grocery store. The more times we leave a business exchanging those two things, time and money, and we're, and we're sitting there reflecting on, wow, that really exceeded my expectation. We may not say it that way, but we're like, wow, that was really a fun visit or worthwhile visit, the more we're going to tell others about it. Absolutely. So, Mark, we, this is a great gift. I hope everyone just um, thoroughly enjoys. We put a lot of time and effort into this, you know, this download and take a look at this uh, Bitly uh, landing page. Um, take your phone right now if you're watching this on Facebook Live, obviously, and, and take a picture of this landing page. But download this free ebook on how to stop losing patients due to finances. You know, it's sad that today's world um, money is an influencer and people put value on what they're spending and does, and it's not so much, are you too expensive? They're just saying, hey, was that amount of money I spent worth it to me? Because look, going back to my phone illustration, look how many crazy people are gonna spend a thousand dollars on a cell phone. I mean, Mark, if you and I were, were to ask an audience 10 years ago, raise your hand if you'd spend a thousand dollars on a cell phone, we wouldn't have seen one hand go up in the audience, not one. Because back then, remember how you got a free phone when you signed up with the phone company, right? Or with the cell company, right? So now fast forward, they have no problem spending a thousand dollars because they've made that purchase acceptable and valuable. They made it user friendly and also they showed the why of the value. So this ebook is really, really important and would go into some of those steps. Absolutely. I had to fix that typo. Otherwise, I wouldn't be going nuts. <laughs> so, <laughs> not losing, losing patients uh, due to finances. Great. We'll put that um, uh, bit.ly uh, link in uh, into the uh, chat box uh, as we go on. And then looking for speed bumps. Um, every office has speed bumps. I had them. You had them. Um, and, and they don't ever go away. They, they just show up sometimes when you least suspect them. But, but 
here again, going back to that staff meeting and that practice building hours when we can sit there and analyze, hey, how is our patient flow? You know, where are our bottlenecks? Are people waiting? Because back to those two things, time is, I think, almost as valuable today as money in the consumer's mindset. Absolutely. In respecting their time. So literally having them come in the office and getting them right back and doing some procedure. You know, Mark, you and I travel a lot, or like, not lately, but we're, we're on an airplane a fair amount. And, and it's, it's, it's weird as many times as I've flown, when the plane pushes back from the gate and starts heading down the tarmac, as long as the plane is moving on the tarmac, I'm, I'm content. But then the plane stops on the tarmac and it sits there. And, I, and I'm not like, I, I have nothing to worry about, but immediately about a minute or two into it, I start looking out the window like, like I'm gonna solve this problem, right? What's going on? The plane's not moving. And, and, but it's goofy, this guy could be circling on the tarmac and I would be content. So it's, it's weird and you could do that same illustration in traffic, you know, you're, you might be creeping along, but you're moving. But if your car sits on the highway, especially, you go nuts. You're like, what the heck? And so that's a speed bump. That's, that's, that's an example of how you could easily get um, a patient off track just because of making them wait. Absolutely. And then looking for patient flow. One of the things that we found in Breakthrough Coaching, our system, is the bottleneck is usually the chiropractor. However, if, you, if you're doing physical therapy, and most offices do some type of physical therapy, passive and active, then, then there's always a spot for them. So what we teach is how a, not, a corrected care patient, it really is wise for them to do therapy first because there's always room for more going to get started on some therapy piece of equipment. And then peel them off to the chiropractor as the chiropractor you know, is through the rotation and, and, and finishing up on time versus having them sit in a what? A, a reception room waiting for that chiropractor. And inevitably the patient would come in with me with a sack of, of uh, vitamins and say, hey, Dr. Morgan, uh, are these good supplements? And, and now that puts me way behind because I think I have to answer all those questions. Where if they would have gone to therapy, they would have easily been, here again, keep me in therapy, keep me doing something. You can even have me repeat a couple of stretches, maybe have a couple of um, procedures that were particularly good for me today. Have me do a couple more reps because as long as I'm doing something and I'm, I'm engaging with the team member, I, that time is valuable to me. And then have me go into the adjusting room. I, I agree. So meeting together at the beginning of the day in the team huddle, absolutely essential to look for those speed bumps uh, in practice, making sure that you're scheduling your specials. We know how important re-exams are to do. I know sometimes you don't get paid for them um, by third-party payers, but guess what? When you get audited, that's the first thing that they look for to see if you're treating without updating your treatment plan and your diagnosis. So making sure that we're scheduling, that it's not a surprise that the patient has a reeval today, that it's actually a learning opportunity. We actually teach the mini ROF um, reported findings at each um, uh, reeval. And so making sure that we have pre-scheduled times, we'll always take a drop in new patient, but having pre-scheduled times so that if a new patient in your practice doesn't become an interruption or, oh, not another new patient. It's like, great, new patient ready. And so helping to learn how to manage that patient schedule is something that we work with a lot. So it's all about results. And it's your results equal your reputation. And um, we do have the 45-minute rule in Breakthrough Coaching. And that means the longer your visit goes over 45 minutes, retention goes down. So, and that's door parking lot, door slam time. So knowing how to appropriately deliver chiropractic 
plus active care in that type of a, a setting where you're getting people in and out um, and maintaining your profitability. In other words, doing the services that are going to not only help the patient, but also help the practice bottom line, knowing how to time that and do three services or three to four units uh, per visit of therapy of, of a modality, including your chiropractic care is absolutely essential. And it's all about creating outcomes. We're gonna focus now on some key team members who can really help promote the profitability of your practice. The first one is we call uh, this position the patient advocate. Some people call them a care coordinator or a wellness coordinator in some practice. Um, this could be a, a full-time role, could be a part-time floater who floats between different positions, but their job is to do more than just what you said, is quarterback the practice. If I see doc is backing up, I'm gonna lateral that patient to passive therapy. I'm gonna lateral that patient to active therapy. So there, I'm moving them in and out, just like a host or a hostess controls the seating in, the, uh, in a restaurant. And then a scribe, I, one of the, the, the most valuable tools, especially because of EMR electronic records that come out, the biggest complaint I used to hear from clients is, Morgan, I, I just, I don't get my notes done, or I have to do them over the lunch hour, or I'm doing it at the end of the day, I want to go home. And one of the greatest things that we teach in our breakthrough coaching system is having a scribe. Now, this wouldn't necessarily fit in a brand new practice, or maybe someone who's you know, in first or second year practice, but you're seeing any kind of patient volume. Having a scribe is a huge asset uh, for many reasons. It, it allows you to talk out loud while you're treating the patient. The patient's gonna get educated so much better. You're attentive. You're not turning your back toward a computer in the middle of a treatment room. You've got a person there with you in the exam, the re-exams and the treatments and they're a witness in a litigious society. I hate to say that, but now you've got a built-in witness with you in the room with you. Uh, and, and then also it speeds you up. Now, when that visit's over, the note is done and you can move on. And then having your notes done, and actually you don't, the offices that have, scri have scribes that I coach, they'll, they'll tell you, they'll say, Morgan, my note is way better than it was when I did it because that CA that's sitting there on your laptop or on a desktop in the room, they're, they're, they're documenting everything. They're documenting that facilitated muscle. They're documenting the inhibited muscle. They're documenting what you adjusted. They're documenting with the patient dialogue. It's so great. And it's, and it's just a, a beautiful note when it's all done and it saves you. And it's nice when you can go to lunch and you know all the morning notes are done, their exam notes are done, the re-exam notes, and you don't have to worry about it. And then we have something um, that's really, really been valuable. Uh, it's, it's called a departmental meeting. And one of the things I enjoy as a coach is looking at the accounts receivable and, and looking at the, the, all the, the moving parts inside a billing office. And the only way you can really statistically manage and, and see how profitable it is, is you look at those numbers very closely. And we've got a great tool uh, that allows that department to analyze, hey, how effective are we? How profitable are we? I'll never forget one of my billing CAs coming to me a year, long time ago, years in practice. And she said, Dr. M, uh, I don't know, you, you still want to stay in network? And, and then she listed the company. And I said, why is that, Melanie? And she said, well, um, the chiropractic adjustments being re reimbursed at $8. Oh. And I said, you got to be kidding me, because everybody else was like in the high 20s to low 30s for an adjustment. And it's going back to just to st statistically managing. And we said, no, we can't. I mean, we're, 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 spending, we're losing money every time we saw that patient. So we got out of network. So just, but I would have never known that if she had been looking at how valuable those charges are compared to what we're billing and what's being paid correctly and what's not being paid correctly. I'll tell you, Morgan, it, it always amazes me how many docs 
<clears throat> don't regularly run that AR. And so they really have no idea where they are in 30, 60, 90, 120. There's a big fat AR and they're just, you know, focused on what do we get collect this week versus the declining value of that AR over time. And, you know, right here on the screen, you can see it says, allow patient accounts to age greater than 90 days, right? Decreases their value by half. So the only way you can do that is to have somebody focused on making that happen. Um, we like to say those, uh, if you fumble the finances, you may never recover, right? So same with patients. If they've got a balance outstanding, there's a good likelihood, Morgan, they're not going to come in or they may miss their visit or skip their visit. So we have a responsibility to the patient in terms of the healing process is to manage the financial process as well. And so not letting people get uh, a, a balance that's out of control, breaking that down into budget size um, chunks, <clears throat> staying ahead of our insurance authorizations, doing billing on a weekly or biweekly basis, and most importantly, proactively following up on EOBs. Listen, the insurance company is counting on the fact that you're not going to follow up on the EOB, that you're just going to let that go and it'll lapse. So making sure that we're not only handling the mail as it comes in, we're handling those EOBs as we receive them, but making sure that we're watching the 30, 60, 90 day uh, outstanding accounts is absolutely essential. It's your financial lifeline. It's the blood flow of your practice. <clears throat> the daily management of your AR, that's your money, um, is essential. If not, most docs who are letting those dollars go past 90 days out there, decreasing past 50% of their value, you might as well take off half the year and have a free clinic half the year. So everybody just come free right now <clears throat> because I'm not going to collect it, right? So making sure that we have a system to check our claims before they go out for errors, making sure that they're cleaned and ready to send. And then when they come back, make sure that we're managing those EOBs, looking for any type of patterns of denial, any type of uh, lack of reimbursement of particular codes and staying on top of that. That's one of the things that we do um, with, with our um, practices on a regular basis. Marketing, absolutely essential to your practice. <clears throat> we want you to have a referral driven practice, but if you're only counting on referrals, you're missing the boat. You're missing most of the people in your community and doing marketing as the, uh, as the uh, healthcare provider, as the doc, it's almost impossible. You can use me as a tool, as a part of your marketing, use me as a face for your marketing, but I need somebody to drive the marketing machine. There needs to be a plan, needs to be somebody working that plan, both internally and externally to the practice. Somebody who's generating testimonials and positive reviews uh, for us in the practice. Somebody who's managing the online posts and the online community. These are key things to do. Well, and, and one of the things that we've been so fortunate for, I guess, social media, during these last, really since March, um, you know, a lot of marketing, has, external marketing is shut down, right? Because you can't go and there's no events, there's no speaking, there's no lunches, there's no BMI. And, and so, one of the tools that we have in our system that we've been really fortunate to share with our clients is video testimonials. And um, we, I mean, you think about it, you've got success stories every day in your office. And just having that patient uh, do a two minute testimonial and then putting that out on social media. And we've got, obviously it's very important for them to get that release. That's our, our we have a compliance form that allows you to do that. but. Having that testimonial gives so much credibility and it can reach so many people. And then you get one that's really particularly good and you've seen a lot of likes and even a few shares, then you can boost it. 
you know, and boosting it out there to your zip code or your county. Oh my gosh, I have clients that said they've doubled the number of new patients they're seeing weekly just be from this one leveraged video. And then knowing how to magnify um, your ability to get out there. Sometimes docs go, I don't have time, Morgan, to go out and market or once things start opening back up, what I really encourage, and you can even do this with video too, is find a couple of staff that are really loving and to totally engaged in what we do. They can go out and they can market for you. When I was in practice, a lot of times we accidentally double booked marketing events. And my office manager who kind of acted also as my marketing manager, she would go out, Haley would go in one direction, I'd go in another direction, Mark, the sad thing is, sometimes she'd come back, we'd come back after the lunch marketing events, she had more new patients on the books than I did. That's right. You know? So, hey, sometimes having a lay person in front of others sharing from their heart, the value of chiropractic is way more valuable than the doctor. And then product sales. You know, I have a, a love and passion for nutrition. And, and I had this huge apothecary. I mean, I had probably, should have added it up one time, probably had eight, 900,000 different supplements at the front desk area on, on these built-in uh, bookcases. And I noticed some things were starting to move a lot more frequently than I thought they would. Come to find out, I had shared a couple of pearls with some staff, particularly the front desk staff, on some key supplements. So what they were doing is they were sharing it at the front about how valuable this was. And pretty soon it was starting to go out the door, even without my effort. So really engage your staff with some of the things you have as um, tools, additional tools that they can go out with. And then here again, don't, you know, don't, you can't sell what you don't own. So it goes back to having that, that CA or that staff appreciate all the tools that you have. One of the things that, I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier, but you know how most chiropractors sell an orthopedic pillow, a sleeping pillow. And so one day we had one of the pills on the IST tables was acting up or it wasn't doing what it was supposed to. So we just grabbed one of our cervical pillows off the shelf and laid it down on a therapy table. Come to find out everyone was like, hey, this feels really good. And all of a sudden we started selling a whole bunch of these cervical pills well, then we put all the pills out on where all the, the patients were laying on their back, even on the mat table, you know, our physical therapist and PTA. And, and lo and behold, everybody was buying bills. I couldn't keep them in stock because <laughs> here again, they learned the value of what it is that that provided. So it's a great tool. So we're, we're also big on um, orthotics. I think orthotics are a great product line for most chiropractic practices. If you really want to pump up your sales of orthotics, involve your practice team, scan their feet, and gift them a pair of orthotics each year. It's just part of what you do for your team. That's a great way to do it. And they can tell patients, you know, what do you think about these orthotics? I love them. I've got mine in right now. And um, it's a great tool. Same thing as you mentioned with um, nutrition. Docs, we're pretty good at the first sale. For the first recommendation, Morgan, you know, you really need to be taking some vitamin D and here's why, or here's some fish oil, but we're really bad on the follow-up. We kind of then, but we toss them the, the tennis ball and then it's in their court, right? Set up a tickler system so that if you make a recommendation, go ahead, set it and you can forget it. It just automatically reminds folks, we have a great Alliance partner in uh, Breakthrough Coaching um, that is called uh, Fullscript, F-U-L-L-S-C-R-I-P-T.com. And they auto set and auto ship according to your um, uh, recommendation for patients, the supplements that you recommend. And then it times it out. And when it's time for them to refill, it automatically generates a text and an email to them. So it's a great um, tickler. <clears throat> Automate and acknowledge, right? Use your team to help leverage practice sales, create a bonus structure so that when they do sell products that uh, they're getting a little extra uh, bump for that. 
and um, use your practice management software to set up those tickler systems. One of the joys I, I have in, in being a coach and a consultant now is, is I get to be the eyewitness of all these successes. And so then I get a client on the phone and they're struggling in a particular area. And I just got off three calls in a row of how other offices have been overcoming that particular challenge or hurdle. And it's so neat how we can leverage each other and solve each other's problems. And I'm just the conduit, I'm just the mediator, I'm the messenger, but boy, I tell you, it's, it's so fun not to be alone. And I really encourage if you're watching this and you're not a part of Breakthrough Coaching, uh, you're missing out on a huge, huge asset and resource because we'll leverage all of us together to make sure we're successful. And that's where I hear again, another reminder, Mark, to download this ebook on how uh, to stop losing patients due to finances, this bit.ly. Please, please, please download this and enjoy. And if you have any questions, please reach out to our corporate office and, and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you on your particular um, practice challenges. Thank you, Mark. Well, Morgan, thank you very much. <clears throat> this is Dr. Mark Santa and Dr. Morgan Mullikin from Breakthrough Coaching. And we're wishing that you make today an exceptional day. Thank you all so much.